All right, thanks, Shelly. Let's go ahead and uh, pull up slides here. There we go. Um, honestly, can't remember if I used this movie before. I think I may have for Alpha a long time ago, but um, given that it's a really good movie and an even better book, I, I thought I would use it again if I hadn't. So i um, going to talk about uh, the newest variants that are uh, potentially threatening uh, from South Africa, again, BA4 and 5. So, um, Late last week uh, were the first indications that I saw that there were potentially uh, new concerning variants that were arising out of South Africa. And uh, if you remember from Omicron, uh, these gentlemen, especially uh, Tulio de Oliveira, was, uh, was really uh, an important early uh, um, harbinger uh, or uh, messenger ab about the rise of Omicron. He's from uh, one, or a, one of the infectious disease research centers in South Africa that's uh, got uh, excellent um, genomics and uh, sequencing capability. And uh, he and uh, Dr. Suleiman as well uh, have been raising the alarm uh, really for the last week about uh, these two new variants, BA4 and 5, which seem to be on, on the rise in South Africa. You, you can see that um, uh, if you remember back to November um, and the rise of Omicron, all of these events occurring right now should seem eerily familiar uh, and um, is one of the things that I'm concerned about is that there is just so much similarity between the rise of BA4 and 5 and the, and the rise of Omicron that it, uh, it makes it worth taking note of. I think it's also worth noting that if you look at the cycle of uh, epidemic waves in South Africa, they've been relatively regular, um, occurring um, on the order of every uh, six months or five months or so. Uh, and that appears to be uh, the case here as well. So um, you can see from Dr. Suleiman this um, tweet that I think came out on the, the 27th. Uh, which talked about uh, Gauteng, which is, again, the province uh, where the capital is located, and it's got about 25% of South Africa's population, had seen a significant increase in COVID-19 cases. And you can see the trajectory and slope of the case curve, at, uh, as it's now being described as wave five, um, which is uh, certainly concerning and reminiscent of the previous epidemic waves. You can see also that <clears throat> hospitalizations there hospital admissions uh, has also made a significant turn uh, northward, uh, and uh, but deaths have yet to make a significant move. There is a, a bit of an uptrend there. The next day, Dr. Oliveira uh, tweeted that there were 6,000 new infections, uh, well above uh, what they had been experiencing for several weeks, and that the positivity rate uh, in uh, Gauteng specifically was 20%, uh, which was uh, an incredible jump. And you can see a bit from those colors and we'll look more in depth that this wave uh, seems to be almost exclusively due to the emergence of these two new forms of the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus, BA4 and, and BA5. So this is a, a little more uh, up close version of that graph to give you a, a, a better picture. And you can see again, wave five, looks like it's uh, well underway in terms of cases. And, you know, I think important to note that there's never been an upswing of this magnitude that hasn't led to a significant epidemic wave in South Africa. Uh, and the hospitalizations are also following suit. Um, <clears throat> within the last two days, uh, Dr. Oliveira and his group have actually published uh, on one of the online servers, actually their own online journal server, uh, some initial analysis they've done of BA4 and 5. Um, here's the phylogenetic analysis. You can see that these two uh, lineages are uh, distinct from BA2, which is in uh, the, the blue down at the bottom in this phylogenetic tree. You can see where the spread has occurred out of Gauteng province, which is where uh, Johannesburg and the, and the capital are, uh, and between there and Durban and Cape Town, 
Uh, and then you can see some of the concerning mutations that uh, BA4 and 5 occupy. Two of the more concerning are there highlighted by the arrows. Those are in very important places in the receptor binding domain. Again, that's the part of the spike protein that binds to the cell receptor that uh, gains an entry into the cell. It's also the target of most of our of our monoclonal antibody therapies, and it's also the target for what we think are the, the most effective neutralizing antibodies that are elicited by vaccine. Uh, and those mutations there at position 486 and 452 seem to be quite important structurally and may um, predict that there will be significant immune evasion from BA4 and 5 compared to previous variants. The other important mutation to note is uh, the blue arrow there, which points to this uh, Delta 6970. If you remember, that is the periodic deletion of uh, a codon that pops in and out, uh, which makes the S gene target failure possible to detect. So we are now back uh, to where we were with BA1, where that S gene target failure uh, will be seen on uh, the laboratory assays that, that use uh, the, the probes that look at that particular section. It's the, uh, uh, in particular, the, the TACMAN assay that uh, uh, has been most able to detect that. And in the US, it's a, it, it's, it's a minority of tests that we use, but it is uh, used across a, a widespread geographic region. So we should be able to get a clue of where potentially BA4 and 5 are arising. This is a, another more detailed uh, phylogenetic analysis from Nextrain. And I think what's important to note is a couple of things. First of all, I've kind of helped label the BA1 and 2 just to, to make it clear where these things diverge. Um, and uh, you know, if you look down at the bottom, you see delta and a pretty big uh, phylogenetic tree from, from delta. But all of those below there are all of the other important variants, including alpha, beta, gamma. And so if you look, the difference between BA1 and 2 is greater than the difference between any of those other variants and, uh, and the original Wuhan strain, uh, and really greater than the divergence of delta from those. So, uh, you know, the, the reality is BA2 should have always been considered a different variant of concern from BA1 because it is dramatically antigenically and genetically different. Uh, and that, I think, um, is one of the reasons why we've seen significant BA2 waves, even in places that had a big BA1 wave, because they're not all just Omicron. They're very different viruses. And BA4 and 5 seem to be subvariants of BA2, again, with some of those important amino acid changes, even though there aren't as many overall. And so it does appear that BA4 and 5 should have even greater genetic drift uh, and therefore greater um, immune evasion compared to BA1 uh, than BA2 did. Uh, if you look at the sequencing data that are coming out of South Africa now and take, take into account these are you know, a couple of weeks old as it takes that much time to catch up, you can see that already 70% uh, or more by the third week of April uh, were BA4 and 5. So this seems to be clearly taking over as the two dominant strains. And you can see that is mostly in Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal. Those are the two most populous provinces in South Africa. And you can see in the bottom left panel D that that S gene target failure <clears throat> signal has now re recurred dramatically in South Africa. Uh, almost 75% you can see of, of PCRs done in South Africa in, in middle of April had this S gene target failure, again, kind of confirming that BA4 and 5 are now the dominant strains in South Africa. Uh, additional data from uh, other sources, this from our world and data showing, again, the significant jump in cases, although uh, it looks as if maybe there's a bit of a hiccup and a slowdown, and we'll talk about that here. You can see hospitalizations are on the rise, but not necessarily as quickly as they have been before. If you look specifically at Gauteng province, you can see a significant jump in the number of confirmed cases there. Uh, and this is on the background of dramatically reduced testing compared to where they have been previously, even before the Omicron surge, you can see back in November, they were testing at a higher rate than they are now, which explains the dramatic increase in test positivity. And you can see 
their test positivity rate is higher than it was at the initial upswing of, uh, of BA1 Omicron. So some mixed signals that we're getting here, but I think some of that just may be due to poor case ascertainment and lower rates of testing. And so that will all come out in the wash, I think in the next week or two. Again, here, hospital data, data specifically out of Gauteng that shows again, um, you know, at least the week of April 18th, a significant jump the week from uh, the data from the, the later week, the week of the 25th, I think is incomplete. So you'll see that fill in. It's just a question of whether it will continue to exceed the previous week or not. Um, ICU data look even more concerning in terms of uh, admissions on that week of the 18th, a bigger jump. Uh, and so we'll have to wait and see ultimately what that looks like. Right now, case fatalities uh, and overall fatalities do not seem to have made a significant jump, but we're so early in this epidemic wave that uh, and we wouldn't expect necessarily to see that. You can see that the, the Omicron wave, which was the previous surge we had in deaths before this, much lower than previous surges. And we, we talked about that at the time during that wave. Um, I don't know why I repeated this graph again, but there it is again, looking at wave five compared to the other four waves. It, it looks like a similar start. If you plot them all together on the same relative time scale, you can see that the, the slope and upswing uh, looks very similar to what we saw in uh, a number of the previous waves, including the previous uh, Omicron wave uh, that we saw here just uh, five months ago or six months ago uh, in November. So this is how Dr. Oliveira kind of uh, summarized his findings and early analysis that, um, you know, it's clear that there's, uh, you know, a new surge, uh, but not uh, clear how significant of an event this is going to be. The immune escape, especially with these mutations that are cited, uh, does appear to be um, uh, highly likely and is concerning, uh, and we'll need to keep an eye on those things. And then Dr. Suleiman just uh, two days ago on Sunday kind of updated the, the most recent data uh, pointing out, again, you can see kind of a mixed bag of signals where there's certainly a higher level of test percent positive, uh, and that slope is going up uh, rather dramatically. Uh, the increase in cases also going up, but, but maybe slowing a bit. Uh, hospitalizations up, as you can see, 63%, uh, but no movement in deaths yet. Uh, and you can see that there, in the very latest data, there is this uh, downtrend in case counts uh, that, again, may be artifact from incomplete data and incomplete or uh, poor testing rates and ascertainment. So I wouldn't put a whole lot of money on that being the, the peak and, and actually going down. I think we'll, we'll know over the next week, but uh, I expect the trend uh, will continue to go up. Um, I think important to note that there have been, uh, I think, close to two dozen BA4, BA5 cases detected already in the United States through sequencing. Um, so the cat is already out of the bag, as we, we know uh, would always be the case uh, in an event like this. Uh, and so um, what happens in South Africa and then probably what will happen in the UK and Europe sooner will give us, I think, a better uh, prediction of, of what we can expect with BA4 or 5 in the US here. But these data are very concerning. Again, this looks to be very similar to the picture we saw with the rise of BA1 Omicron back in November. And so uh, I, I think we all need to keep a very close eye on this. And, and this obviously changes a bit the dynamics of what we can expect over the next several months. Um, this would, I think, probably portend a, a, a more significant surge that would come uh, in the early summer um, if this uh, turns out to be kind of the next major variant uh, rather than you know, potentially skating through until the fall when we, we would have the next big uh, wave. So that's all I have. All right, questions for Dr. Lawler this morning. <clears throat> 